before we get into today's video and the 60th anniversary studio tour, watch to the end to see how you can win this 60th anniversary pin set. Good afternoon, everyone. Today we are at Universal Studios Hollywood for a special past member preview of the new 60th anniversary studio tour on the Glamour Tram. So we've been here several times the last few weeks, kind of peeking, seeing what's going on, but today is the first time that the public is gonna be able to see it. There were some team member previews the other day, but today is the first time the public is gonna see the new additions, the renovations, and you'll actually get to step off the tram. We'll tell you more when we get inside. Before we start off on our tour, there is a variety of limited time food, drinks, and desserts around the park for the 60th anniversary of the studio tour. And the event officially kicks off April 26th, and when it does, there will be a tasting card that you can purchase and try a variety of items. But you know us, we've got to start right away. So over at Mel's, they have 1964 classic TV dinners. They have a meatloaf with mashed potatoes and veggies with a brownie cake. And they also have fried chicken, mashed potatoes, and gravy with the veggies and the brownie cake. Again, they're in 1964, and they do come with a fountain drink. In addition, they have some desserts, including the film reel cookie that is additional. So we got one of those. The non-alcoholic drink is the Cosmic Pop. And as we're showing it to you, we'll tell you what's in it, because honestly, I can't remember. And if you want a little spike of something, they do have the... Glitz and Glamour, which is an adult beverage, and we'll tell you what that is too. Whoops, when we take a closer look. So, this music above us is really loud, but this is the uh, Glitz and Glamour, which is pink lemonade, vodka, Sprite, lemon hibiscus syrup, and citrus topped with whipped cream and chocolate candy pearls with a marshmallow sugar rim. There you go. Oh, that is good. That could be dangerous because you don't taste the alcohol, but that's really good, real super sweet. Now this is the non-alcoholic. And since I can't remember anything, we have to hold this up here. It is the Cosmic Pop. This is $11, the Glitz and Glamour was 18. This is Sprite, Blue Curacao, Grenadine. Well, Blue Curacao syrup probably because Blue Curacao is alcoholic, isn't it? This is a non-alcoholic drink, I know. Grenadine and sparkling cranberry juice topped with blue and raspberry pop rocks. I have whipped cream on my face, I'm being told. Oh, that is good too, and it had the pop rocks on it, and you can hear them popping. <laughs> I will say this uh, 1964 dinner was kind of a cool idea in the little TV tray. And it does come with that dessert and your soft drink. So for 1964 plus past member discount, not too bad of a deal, I guess. Because the soda's like four or five bucks if you don't have a refill cup. And you get your discount. So it comes out to like $18 or something. Let's try this cookie. Now the cookie has a gray frosting, which will probably turn my mouth black for the rest of the video. <laughs> Let's give it a try. The tour, but first, a few safety rules. That's right, Jimmy. We do have some safety rules, first and foremost. But with that... We are about to transition from the theme park to the movie studio. Because a lot of people don't realize we started this whole operation with the movie studio. And under that bridge we're about to head under is the invisible dividing line. And where we're going to start with this story is the very beginning. It was in 1912 when German immigrant Carl Limley founded the Universal Film Manufacturing Company on the East Coast. Two years later he moved his company out west. And on March 15th, 1915, he opened the doors to Universal Studios, where we are today. He said, Universal City is going to be the strangest city in the world. And we really are a real city. We have our own, our own zip code, post office, fire department, sheriff's office. We even have our own hospital. That all makes us a pretty legitimate city. The only thing we don't have here are residents. No one lives here. The only thing we do here is make movies and television. Uh, and the whole point of having a movie studio like what we have is to create complete control over the movie making process. Now, as we make our way down the uh, timeline, you can see, or down the hill rather, you can see on your right is what we call our universal timeline. This is just a few of the thousands of movies we've made here in our more than 109 year history. 
But as we make our way down, we're headed into our front lot. What I mean by that is our studio is separated into two sections, the front lot and the back lot. The back lot we'll get into a little later, but the front lot is where you're going to find the uh, administrative offices, sound and editing facilities, and the majority of our 36 sound stages. Now, as we're making our way on in, you're going to see that very real fire station on your right, Station 51, named after the television series Emergency from 1972. Um, but that is the beginning of our front lot, and like I said, on our front lot, you're going to see mostly our sound stages. And you might be wondering to yourself, what is a sound stage? Well, a sound stage is a warehouse-like facility that's built specifically for making movies and television. The walls of a sound stage are about five times thicker than regular walls, making it about 98% soundproof. About 80 to 90% of filming on a TV show or, or movie takes place inside of a sound stage. And most of what they do in a sound stage are interior shots. So if it takes place inside the house, inside the school, inside the hospital, it was probably filmed inside of a sound stage. But I bet you'd like to take a, great, a closer look at a sound stage. And so you shall. When we're going down the hill, coming up on your left-hand side is our oldest sound stage, sound stage 12. It happens to also be our largest. Take a look up at your screens and see a few things that film inside sound stage 12. Frankenstein's Laboratory, Dracula's Lair, the Scarface Mansion, the Welcome Center from Jurassic Park, the Clock Tower scene from uh, Back to the Future. We also have... Uh, all of uh, Whoville from How the Grinch Stole Christmas. You can also see it was once the home of the voice. The voice has since moved to other sound stages. You can see on your screen there, that's what a sound stage looks like when it's empty. But coming up ahead, uh, we have a row of very active sound stages, 11 through 7 on your, excuse me, on your left hand side. <clears throat> is uh, some sound stages that have been very active in the last few years. Superstore, the, this show starring America Ferreira, was filmed in these sound stages. Hack, starring Gene Smart. The entirety of the reboot of Saved by the Bell were filmed inside these sound stages. Uh, also, Bel Air, the dramatic retelling of The Fresh Prince of Bel Air, starring Jabari Banks, films right over here. In fact, they're still working in 8 and 7, the last two on your left over here. And the doors are wide open in 8 and 7. So take a good look inside and you can see that they actually are working over there. Uh, but what I do would like to always point out when I have the opportunity to, uh, there's there in uh, 8, that was some uh, wardrobe racks. But what I'd like to point out about 7, right here through this open door, how many of you love horror movies, the scary movies? That is where they filmed the iconic shower scene from Psycho by, uh, uh, by Alfred Hitchcock inside that sound stage. As we turn the corner, though, I do want to show you uh, this parking deck over here. It is called the uh, Abbott Costello parking deck. Yes, that is where they park cars, but here at the, uni at the Universal lot, we do tend to get creative. Like the Good Place, Mr. Mayor, all both starring Ted Danson. Well, Ted Danson is coming back for another show uh, that he's doing with Michael Schur, the creator of The Good Place, called A Classic Spy. They filmed in Stage 19 over here. Also in Stage 19, our latest Best Picture Oscar winner, Oppenheimer, filmed the uh, Oval Office scenes inside Stage 19. He's very excited because he's got his own prequel series on Peacock, our streaming service right now. You've seen the two hit movies. Now you can see his origin story. But also, take a look at these bungalows. These bungalows, these house-like structures on your left, used to be the dressing rooms to the stars. Stars like Doris Day or John Wayne. They would get ready over here and go film. But nowadays, productions are more, more mobile. They've got their own trailers. So these have been turned into production offices right here next to us. This used to be the production office of Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Seven Bucks Productions. Now, it's the home of Kevin Williamson. You might know him as the creator of the Scream franchise or Dawson's Creek or Vampire Diaries. Now, he's coming back with Scream 7, which he's going to be directing. Right down this driveway, you'll see Mark Platt Productions. You see the Wicked Bubble. He brought Wicked to the Broadway stage. Now he's bringing it to the silver screen in a two-part movie coming this Thanksgiving. And finally, right here, 5195 on your left. That's the office of Alfred Hitchcock. That's where he spent the last two decades of his career making movies like Psycho, Vertigo, and The Birds. Now it's the home of the De Laurentiis Company. They brought us uh, Hannibal Lecter in movies like Silence of the Lambs and the Hannibal TV series. Uh, and finally, right over here, these last two sound stages, 25 and 26. These are our newest on the front lot. This is where Lopez versus Lopez, starring George Lopez and his real-life daughter, Mine Lopez, is filmed. But it's also where they are filming a show called St. Dennis, uh, Dennis Medical. 
I saw a wigwag. That's the red, uh, the red circle. That meant they were filming, so I had to jump off real quick. So, um, with that, welcome to the Metropolitan sets, everybody. These are our big city sets. This is where they film uh, cities anywhere and everywhere. But if you think about the fact that we might have gone 88 miles an hour to get here, you'll know where we are. We're in uh, Back to the Future. Friends, welcome to the set of Back to the Future. You don't see that every day, do you? This is New York Street. If you look to your left and you look to your right, you're gonna see a few things that I can point out for you, like the streets are curved. Now, in real New York City, the streets are pretty straight, but here on a back lot, they're gonna build streets that are curved because they're using your imagination to, uh, to bring the city to life. For instance, if you see a street that curves to the left, you're gonna imagine that it keeps on going, which you can see at the end when we get up here, it does not. But with that, this street is where you would find uh, such films as Captain America, The First Avenger. This is where Steve Rogers gets the injection. This is where they, uh, where he's running through the streets. This is also where the finale scene from Transformers takes place. If you love Chicago, or Blues, the Blues Brothers, this was Chicago, where the Pinto goes into the ditch in the road. Now, as you can see, we're reaching the end over here, and you can see that these streets don't keep going because they're only gonna build what they see on camera. So with that, um, we're gonna head out of the concrete jungle and into the real jungle. And here is Peter Jackson to tell you about his work with Universal. This is New York Street. If you look to your left and you look to your right, you're gonna see a few things that I can point out for you, like the streets are curved. Now, in real New York City, the streets are pretty straight, but here on a back lot, they're gonna build streets that are curved because they're using your imagination to uh, to bring the city to life. For instance, if you see a street that curves to the left, you're going to imagine that it keeps on going. But you can see at the end when we get up here, it does not. But with that, this street is where you would find uh, such films as Captain America, The First Avenger. This is where Steve Rogers gets the injection. This is where... They, uh, where he's running through the streets. This is also where the finale scene from Transformers takes place. If you love Chicago, or Blues, the Blues Brothers, this was Chicago, where the Pinto goes into the ditch in the road. Now, as you can see, we're reaching the end over here, and you can see that these streets don't keep going because they're only gonna build what they see on camera. So, with that, um, we're gonna head out of the concrete jungle and into the real jungle, and here is Peter Jackson to tell you about his work with Universal. Thank you, Stella, it's great to have you along for the ride. Now, we have created this 3D immersive experience, so you're going to have to have your glasses ready. Don't put them on yet, just put them in your hand because we're about to return to Skull Island. That's right, folks, as we head back to Skull Island. We're back in Skull Island.
going to head on back to do our 60th anniversary World Famous Studio Tour. So you just did King Kong 360 3D. Pretty impressive, right? Oh, pretty impressive. That's right. That goes deep into our tour history. Now the collapsing bridge was a mechanical effect the trams used to cross. The hydraulic support beams would split and the bridge would seem to collapse. Now the runaway bridge was originally located in our western sets. It used to hurtle toward the tram and come to a screeching halt. Both are now retired effects made for the studio 50 years ago. Now the collapsing bridge was a mechanical effect the trams used to cross. The hydraulic support beams would split and the bridge would seem to collapse. Now the runaway bridge was originally located in our western sets. It used to hurtle toward the tram and come to a screeching halt. The metro sets were once the home to Hollywood's biggest star. Right here is where the original studio tour King Kong attraction resided from 1986 until 2008. He stood 30 feet tall and weighed in at 13,000 pounds. Over the years, millions of guests got to meet King Kong face to face as he shook the tram. So close you could feel his hot banana breath. He was shaking our very tram, which we can also call a picture car, and we're seen in the Back to the Future films. Some of these, even some of the Flintstone cars, as you can see. Here are some of the stars of Lopez versus Lopez, George and Mayan. The studio tour has changed over the years. Each generation has its favorite moments and memories, whether it's the rock slide or the ice tunnel. Dad, really? Who didn't love the ice tunnel? Well, one thing that hasn't changed has been family sharing this one-of-a-kind behind-the-scenes adventure together. How about picture car? Oh, that would be great. There you go. These picture cars can take you all over the world. If you look at this tank from Transformers, the outside is really just plywood painted to look like steel and iron. Makes that vehicle a lot lighter, a lot easier to move around the set compared to an actual tank. But do not take that into battle. What is that? You hear that? That does not sound good at all. So for many years, this part of the studio tour was the greens department, where we keep real plants and trees that could be used as set dressings for TV shows and movies. Nowadays, it's where you can see many of the set pieces used in the Jurassic films, including some plants and trees, except these are Just like the dinosaurs around here. At least... I don't think the dinosaurs are there. We do have a T-Rex. We have a T-Rex. We have a lot of the sets from the first three movies of Jurassic Park, like the mobile lab from Jurassic Park, The Lost World. Now we have some dinosaurs in their cages, but just be careful out here. Excited to tell you that the new era of the franchise will begin on July 2nd, 2025, with Jurassic World 4. Now we are visiting the Jurassic Forest. Now we just talked to Chris Pratt. So just be on the We do have a T-Rex. We have a T-Rex. We have a lot of the sets from the first three movies of Jurassic Park like the mobile lab from Jurassic Park, The Lost World. Now we have some dinosaurs in their cages, but just be careful out here. I'm excited to tell you that the new era of the franchise will begin on July 2nd, 2025 with Jurassic World 4. Now we are exiting the Jurassic Forest. Now we just talked to Chris Pratt. But we're now heading into a classic attraction here on the back lot for the studio tour. Here to tell you about it is today's show co-host and weather anchor, Al Roker. Time for my favorite part of the tour. And here comes the rain to your left. 
Now this movie rain is a result of an overhead sprinkler system. Shoots the water straight up into the air and helps it fall back down to the earth naturally. Now this is a mechanical practical effect, so it turns on and off immediately whenever I push the button. So as you can see, if I turn it off right now, the rain is off. Uh, it's not off. Hold on. Rain is off. Why is it turning off? The what is that? Oh, would you look at that. And we are now headed down into our western sets. Welcome to the Old West. A lot of cowboys, directors, writers have moseyed all around this area. If you're fans of Quentin Tarantino and the film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, this set over to your left, the Opera House, you can go inside, film a whole scene in there. We had Leonardo DiCaprio right here on the porch with actress Julia Butters. They were discussing his acting career in the movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Steven Spielberg also took over this area for Amistad and The Color Purple. And of course, these classic cowboys made this whole area come to life. Like the Duke, John Wayne, Jimmy Stewart, Kirk Douglas, Robert Redford, just to name a few. We call this area Six Points because it used to branch out into six different streets. And back in the silent film era, we could film six movies at the same time because we weren't recording sound. Now all that has changed because we have people talking in movies, we have lots of sound effects. Lady Gaga also used that flash flood in her music video Judas with water splashing all around. And we are now headed down into our western sets. Welcome to the Old West. A lot of cowboys, directors, writers have moseyed all around this area. If you're fans of Quentin Tarantino and the film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, this set over to your left, the Opera House. You can go inside, film a whole scene in there. We had Leonardo DiCaprio right here on the porch with actress Julia Butters. They were discussing his acting career in the movie, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Steven Spielberg also took over this area for Amistad and The Color Purple. And of course, these classic cowboys made this whole area come to life. Like the Duke John Wayne. But as you take a look over to your left, this is a body of water we call the Hollywood Ocean. For the studio tour, we added the parting of the Red Sea to the studio tour, inspired by the classic film The Ten Commandments, which was a paramount picture. The star of the movie, Charlton Heston, made an appearance to part the waters for the guests. Anyone remember that one? Oh yeah. The glamour tram seemed to drive right through the lake. And give, like more, um, water is part of the tour. gave everyone on board a sea level view. It filmed out in our Park Lake, Hollywood Ocean, where the Red Sea was. But going even back farther than 70 years, we're going to enter our Little Europe sets where our classic monster movies really came to life back in the 1930s and 40s. We have some of the sets still set up, like the All Chocolate Everything store. Ooh, the yogurt shop is still set up as well. Have some chairs there ready for a very interesting flavor of yogurt. You, Eleanor Shellstrom, are dead. Cool. This location, the afterlife, come on. I have never ever seen this. You're in the good place. I'm not supposed to be here. I can't risk going to the bad place. Okay, well, maybe it's not all that bad. Yeah. How can I help you? What is the bad place like? Well, it doesn't sound awesome. The Good Place filmed out here for all four seasons, but back in the 1930s, that whole area swarming with these classic monster movies. I think we always think of monsters. Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, Bride of Frankenstein, The Mummy, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, The Invisible Man, Phantom of the Opera. Classic films are just brilliantly made. That Frankenstein image, flathead, all 
it's, it's one of the great icons of the world. That to me was like the essence of the universal horror film. I was just mesmerized by this movie. Boris Karloff, Lon Chaney. I remember the original Universal Studios Mummy movie really scaring me. It's still ringing in our memories now. We're about halfway through our tour, so just a reminder, please remain seated at all times. And we have one more soundstage in this area. So instead of switching out a tour guide right now, we're actually switching out a driver. So, <laughs> happy 60th. <laughs> Hi, Michael. We drove down together. Good times. Oh, we'll have a blast. <laughs> and he's going to take us through Soundstage 50. There's actually a big production headed on in there. They're currently filming, but we've made an arrangement with production to travel through the stage to see what's inside. So pretty cool. Now, the set has just been decorated for a highly anticipated production. I know. it's can't even mention it. It's so highly anticipated. And it's a Hollywood's only two-level soundstage. So we're going to head on in. As you can see, there's some signs that say filming in progress. And wherever there's filming on the lot, you'll see a lot of signs that say filming in progress. Sometimes we have to go into a quiet zone because there is active filming. And they don't want this tram tour to interrupt the filming on the lot. So we're going to head on in, take a look around. Pretty exciting. Now it's set up like a subway station. We can go on location to an actual subway, but we'd have to close off the sets. So here, if we build our own subway station, it makes it a bit easier to fit all the camera crew in there, all the equipment, lights, especially if we're going to have a special effect going on. Now please remain seated as we make our way inside. This is a hot set, meaning it is completely decorated, locked for picture, and ready for the director to call action. It is completely decorated, locked for picture, and ready for the director to call action.
Jake. Now you just survived the earthquake, the big one. Now this attraction has been closed for the past year. They've been renovating it. It opened recently back up just this week for our 60th anniversary. The attraction originally opened 35 years ago in 1989 and reopened this spring with a complete Hollywood makeover. Updating all the props and movie making equipment. Break the set in the 1970 movie Earthquake. 1970s were big in their disaster movies. Jaws off the coast of Martha's Vineyard on the East Coast. But we built our own replica of Amity Island. It's a happy place to come and swim. Nothing bad ever happens. The water is calm and serene. And oh, we have a scuba diver out there. Up there. Hi, having fun out there. Fun, right? Oh my. I, uh, you know what? I'm sure they saw something really cool down in the water. They took a big dive down there. They're fine. We're going to continue on with our tour. I think something's in the water. Oh yeah. Something is pulling that here to your right. There is definitely something in the water. We're going to need a bigger tram. Well, we found what was in the water. A replica of the mechanical shark used in Jaws. That shark to your right, only shark able to do the backstroke. Pretty impressive. Well done. Now, a lot of things have to go right when making a movie, and so many things kept going wrong while making Jaws. The mechanical shark, the star, caused a whole lot of problems. It sank to the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean the very first day of shooting. That caused the production to go 100 days over schedule, tripled the film's budget. This film was almost a complete disaster. That's a much maligned shark. The shark was frustrating. It didn't really work all the time. It didn't work hardly at all. Wherever you were on the island, you could hear the radio links. They were always saying, the shark is not working. Repeat, the shark is not working. We just waited around. We just waited and waited and waited. The shark worked well enough. For a while there. Of the film Jaws was editor Verna Fields, who was able to piece together all the salvageable footage of the shark working. She went on to win Best Editor of the Academy Awards for Jaws, and Jaws turned into the first ever big summer blockbuster. Very soon after Jaws came out, back in 1975, Steven Spielberg had a big part in making it happen. And Amity Island is a nice little harbor town, a residential area. And we built our own residential area out in this portion of our back lot. We have our chicken ranch to your right. Episodes of Murder, She Wrote, Quantum Leap have filmed there. And we even built a whole neighborhood for filming. You saw a few neighborhoods already, like our big city sets, our courthouse square. But we have our colonial street to your left. It's also where we filmed Desperate Housewives. That is Wisteria Lane over to your left-hand side. All these houses are big, open, practical sets. We can go inside, film a whole scene. Our Colonial Street is also where they filmed the show Ted. It was Framingham, Massachusetts. But to your left, you'll see these signs. It says Lion Estates. You may remember that the Lion Estates was where Marty McFly lived in the Back to the Future trilogy. Live in the home of tomorrow, today. Now those signs are replicas of the original props made for the 30th anniversary of that film. And the neighborhood set we had, well, a lot of famous people have lived out there. Tom Hanks lived there in the Burbs. Nelly filmed his music video. Hi, Nelly. <laughs> and of course, those housewives. We can always go on location to film a scene in a neighborhood, but it just takes a lot of work asking people to move out of their homes for a little bit, compensate them for doing so. So a lot goes into filming on location. We can do it all over the world. 
But if you're going to have it for a few weeks or a month, best place to do it is film out here on the lot. Now we have a couple cool sets left to show you. One of them is from War of the Worlds, which was directed by Steven Spielberg. Now in the movie, it takes place during an alien invasion of Earth. And in the middle of this two and a half hour movie, for five minutes of the movie, you see the aftermath of a plane crash. And so to make it look as realistic as possible, production designers bought and destroyed a real life airplane, cut it up into four big pieces, rip the roof off of the airplane, make it look like this plane fell apart in the sky during this alien invasion, and they wanted the roof ripped off because that was part of the mystery of the movie. Where did these passengers go? It's empty. Before production built this plane crash set, this area was Site B for the Lost World Jurassic Park. Prior to that, it served as the whimsical Whoville for How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Here is a scene that filmed right here on the lot. The airplane press site set is a perfect example of a set that is all designed around a vision that Stephen has. When we first began to sit down to talk about the world of the world, I thought, what if the 747 goes down right in a big neighborhood? Because it's, it's just something you don't see. You're doing good. You're doing good. Keep doing something. Listen, man. Listen, 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 close your eyes, okay? Stand close to me. Now over to your right is a set that has been a highlight since the original 1964 studio tour. This is the home of Norman Bates from Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. Here is a scene that filmed right here on the lot. The airplane crash site set is a perfect example of a set that is all designed around a vision that Stephen had. When we first began to sit down to talk about the war of the world, I thought, what if the 747 goes down right in a big neighborhood? Because it's, it's just something you don't see. You're doing good. You're doing good. Keep doing something. That's it. That's it. Close your eyes, okay? Stand close. To me. Now over to your right is a set that has been a highlight since the original 1964 studio tour. This is the home of Norman Bates from Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. came out in 1960, stars Anthony Perkins, Janet Lee, And this psycho house has moved around the lot for filming. It used to be where that chicken ranch was about a few decades ago, and now it's its permanent spot up here on the lot. Now we're going to head on down to the Bates Motel in just a little bit, but here's that classic music. It reminds you of, well, a psycho. And this psycho house has moved around the lot for filming. It used to be where that chicken ranch was about a few decades ago. And now it's its permanent spot up here on the lot. Now we're going to head on down to the Bates Motel in just a little bit. But here's that classic music. It reminds you of, well, a psycho. Hollywood sign has been commemorating its centennial year. It's been up on those Hollywood hills for a hundred years. Now these signs are about 10 feet tall. The original signs in the Hollywood hills are 45 feet tall, so they are huge. But what a sight to see. We are in Hollywood. 
Now, for the first few decades of the studio tour, one of our hallmarks was a visit to Prop Plaza, where guests disembarked for once-in-a-lifetime photos and to interact with characters, vehicles, and props from their favorite productions. Well, just for our 60th anniversary, we brought this opportunity back. Now, remember, folks, we're going to let you get off the tram. This is a limited stop. Gather all your personal belongings. Make sure to grab those 3D glasses. You'll please walk toward the front of the tram and have fun. I'm Olivia. See you and have fun out there. For the 60th, you actually get to get off the tram. This is the step off the tram moment. There are a bunch of photo opportunities with the Glamour Tram, Norman Bates, the Hollywood sign, the Bates Motel, the Psycho House, Cars from Fast and the Furious, King Kong, Jaws, and what else? What was the other one? I think that was it. So you can kind of take your time. They do try to rush you through. Don't take forever. Oh, the sun there. <laughs> because they do want to push people through, but this is so cool. Very, very cool. And I remember back in the day when I was little, you used to get off the tram halfway through at Prop Plaza. And I have pictures of that. I'm gonna to have to look to see if I can put that in here. But we'll get back on the tram now. Oh, and I was so excited. I saw two of my absolute favorite YouTubers. Even I, you know, get a little geeked out sometimes when I see my favorite YouTubers. Jackie and Sam, they're on a road trip across the country. They live in Orlando. So excited, very, very friendly too. Let's go, we get back on the tram. This has been a very cool experience. So Doc Brown is new with the DeLorean there in Courthouse Square. What else? Earthquake has been redone. Um, the Dino Paddock, which used to be the old Fast and Furious attraction, just a facade. Uh, the new T-Rex there. They've updated all the sets, cleaned and repainted almost everything on the back lot. Very, very cool. And plus the whole video system is brand new. The whole screen, all the, the clips that they show you. As we wait, there are two scenes left. We have the note set, and then we have Fast and Furious, and we'll head back to the Tram Plaza with a really cool photo op. Our 60th anniversary photo ops that we got going on over here. My name is Ryan. Your driver's name is Joseph. Obviously, I'm probably not the same guy you had the first time. I will be your guide for the last act of the studio tour. We got a couple of great things for you. Get the tram. And I'll be back to help you as soon as it is safe to do so. Otherwise, folks, welcome back to the 60th anniversary celebration. Now, here to help keep, keep things rolling along towards the end of our tour, Gail went from being a guest on the tour to having one of the actual sets from his film, Nope, as a part of the studio tour. And that is, of course, where we're headed right now. Jupiter's Claim from, of course, the aforementioned Jordan Peele film, Nope. Movie magic only happens when a team of collaborators, often in the hundreds, work together to take an impossible notion and bring it to life. This is Jupiter's Claim, a nostalgic, small-time Southern California amusement park owned by former child star Ricky Juke Park. Over there, look into the winking well and have your picture taken just like the kids in that old 90s movie Kid Sheriff. That's what this whole place is loosely based on. Remember that one? No? Why? Well, a little further down, you can see the brand new Star Lasso Experience. Built to showcase an unbelievable...
unbelievable hit live show. It's not looking so live anymore. Anyway, behind this Hollywood fantasy of the Gold Rush Frontier Town lies a sinister secret. It is smack dab in the center of the UFO hotspot. What's a bad miracle? tunnel. Now the tram would of course climb into an imaginary elevation of 12,000 feet and the only way back to the theme park was through the ice tunnel where the slightest sound could trigger an avalanche and it always did, causing the walls to spin and the guests to sit along with the Hollywood special effect. And of course, you well know that that's gone but it has been replaced with something that gets you back into the movies and of course, we're going to get you back to the movies right now. first golden age to the current era of streaming and binge watching your favorite shows. As movies get bigger on the big screen, we've given you exclusive access to ride the movies. No matter how much entertainment changes or how we experience it, we'll be here at the studio tour to show you how it's done. Now I'd also like to acknowledge all of our studio tour ambassadors, drivers, and of course my fellow studio guides throughout our history who have helped make the studio tour world famous. From our first four guides and drivers to the hundreds of team members who support the tour today. To our past members, that's all of y'all. Thank you for being with us today. If you're not a past member, head to the Universal Box Office. See how you can upgrade to an annual pass so you can come back again and again and again. And of course, make sure that you've downloaded the Universal Studios app. That's where you'll find information, including today's park hours, which are as soon as you're done with the tour, please leave, wait times, <laughs> mobile food ordering, and as well as our 60th anniversary promotions on food and retail offerings. And of course, to purchase any of the NBC Universal movies and TV shows you've seen on the tour, visit www.uphe.com or ask any of our retail stores. On behalf of myself, Ryan, your studio guide for all in 15 minutes, as well as your driver, Joseph, here, thank you once again for joining us here at Universal Studios Hollywood, and we hope you've enjoyed this exclusive behind-the-scenes experience that's been 60 years in the making. As we say in the business, folks, that's a wrap. But hey, thank you so much for joining us, folks. You pass holders out there, you are the first wave of people that get to experience this exclusive 60th anniversary programming. Uh, be sure to come back you know, a few more times throughout the summer. Once again, the tour will be running. This exclusive 60th anniversary edition of the tour will be running from next Friday, April 26th through August 11th. So you have roughly three months to come back and ride it again and again. That is it here, the first tour for past members of the new 60th Anniversary Studio Tour Tour. Very cool. We saw all the updates, all the upgrades, the step off the tram moment. Very, very cool. So it starts April 26th is the first official day through August 11th. And everybody always asks, no, you do not need a separate ticket for the Studio Tour. It is just a regular attraction here at Universal Studios, just like anything else up on that board, the rides, the shows. 
You do not need to make a reservation or any kind of special ticket, nothing. You just get on when you're ready to do it when you're here uh, for your day at Universal Studios. So we'll be back next week for a Glow Partner preview and we'll also be back for a media event. So we'll see some more, but make sure you're subscribed to the channel for all the updates. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button with the notification bell turned on like our tour guide Ryan said. If you're filming this tour for YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe. I like him. So we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. time together so now the ride is done we saw some crazy cool stuff and we had a lot of fun this tram has made its final stop but don't be sad and blue because there's still one more thing that i'd like to say to you have a fantastic day have a tram Fantastic night Watch your step As you exit the tram And everything will be alright Thank you for watching to the end of the video. Now, if you'd like a chance at winning this 60th anniversary pin set, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Hit that subscribe button with the notification bell turned on. Like this video, hit that like button. And then comment with what your favorite past or present attraction is on the studio tour. It's that simple. We'll pick a name at random after 7 p.m. on the 24th and notify you here on YouTube if you've won. Good luck. So comment, like, and subscribe. Have a fantastic day. Have a fantastic night. Watch your step as you exit the tram. And everything will be all.